So I'm here today with Jack Morrison, co-founder and CEO of Scythe Robotics. Thanks for joining us today, Jack. Thanks for having me, Jason. It's great to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about what Scythe's doing and, and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Yeah, so our mission at Scythe is to change everything about how we take care of our outdoor world. Uh, you know, we think the polluting manual equipment that's used to care for our outdoor green spaces uh, is really outdated and brought into the future and into the 21st century, finally, with autonomous all-electric equipment, uh, like our first product, the Site M.52 Autonomous All-Electric Commercial Mower. Awesome. So I know we've been working together for, for a little while here with the Jetson modules. We started out with the TX2, and now we're on with the AGX Xavier. So tell us a little bit about why Jetson AGX Xavier, what does that do for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been looking at Jetson from the beginning because we knew we needed a product that was low power and high, uh, you know, high compute capability to do all of the operations on board that are required to make a autonomous outdoor off-road vehicle. Um, you know, we use all sorts of features uh, from the Jetson platform, from the various interfaces we can bring data into to all of the compute on the GPU and all the other accelerators. Um, to just you know, leveraging its low power nature to get the most battery we can out of this machine and let the power go into cutting grass rather than running our computer. Yeah, yeah. So when we were able to develop the eight channel uh, Xavier baseboard for you guys, right, and be able to tailor it to work with all the different interfaces that you need. Uh, tell us a little bit about the sensing architecture. What do you need to do to sense the environment around the robot? Sure, so uh, M.52's covered in sensors. We've got eight cameras up here. Uh, they go a full 360 degrees to be able to see everything that's around it. We've got ultrasonic sensors around the base as an added layer of safety. We've also got a nine-off IMU on board, uh, RTK, GNSS, and wheel encoders. And all of this information has to come in over you know, very robust interfaces. We don't want USB or Ethernet flaking out on us when it's out in the field. And so you know, we've been able to leverage Xavier's FPS link and CAN bus uh, inputs to and the baseboard they all designed to bring this information in in a reliable fashion. Yeah, that's one of the key things with us working together is also developing the cameras, right? The FPD link uh, cameras to be able to sense the world out there, right? So you've got a varying environment, right? A lot of challenges to deal with. I know we're working together to try to make that video as robust as possible with uh, some new HDR capabilities with AGX Xavier. Um, what other type of technical challenges have you been had to face with uh, this, this product? HDR has been a huge one. You know, when you're out mowing, you're constantly staring into incredibly bright sunlight, right into the sun, uh, and into dark, dark shadows simultaneously. You need to be able to distinguish between them. Um, and beyond that, you know, the world's a weird place. There's a lot of things that happen outdoors in our green spaces, uh, and just adapting the machine learning and all of the uh, autonomy this machine to handle the breadth of scenarios that we run into is an ongoing uh, opportunity for improvement. You know, we've got lots of data sets that we've gathered using these cameras that allow us to you know, distinguish between a dog and a park bench that allows our machine to operate really safely around uh, people and other dynamic uh, things in our environment. Yeah, so actually that was one of the things I wanted to ask a little bit more about is uh, obviously if this thing is out there working together with people and you know, you never know what might cross it. Uh, how do you, how do the people work safely with the robot? Yeah, M.52 is designed to work right side by side with landscapers in the field. You know, mowing is about 40% of the work that's done on a commercial property. So there's a ton of other work from edging and trimming to tree care and fertilizer applications and leaf removal that humans have to do still on the property while M.52 is out mowing. Um, and so it's designed that not only can you hop on and hop off and drive the machine yourself, but these cameras recognize people in their vicinity, uh, and the machine just comes to a stop if you come near it. It's one of the great things about uh, landscaping and mowing as an application as compared to some of the you know, on-road environments is we can always just come to a stop, turn the blades off, and just sit still and, and be very safe uh, from the get-go. Thanks, Jack, for giving us that, that excellent overview. It's been great to work with Scythe Robotics uh, to bring this product to market. So appreciate you being with us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And it's been great from our side to uh, work with D3 and Vidya and bring M.52 to light. Um, if folks are interested in learning more, you can check out the Bringing Autonomy Off-Road talk by Nick Peretti. 
uh, one of Sites' uh, premier machine learning engineers later this week at GTC. 